What's up, everybody? Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com coming to you from Hogsports Studio. Today on the show, we've got to get to Razorback basketball, baseball, football, recruiting. We have got so much stuff to get to as the March extravaganza begins. Everything overlapping with football, a lot of recruiting news. So we're going to talk about all that and more. It's just going to be me and you today, so get your questions in. Let's do it. Pretty nice little Tuesday. The weather's nice outside. Spring football starting today. Like I said, we've got baseball to get to, basketball, recruiting. I mean, football. (laughs) I don't know if we'll have enough time. (laughs) So let's get started with it. Before we get started, though, I got to, of course, remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. Be sure to throw us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Also available on YouTube. We always upload it right after to YouTube and available on Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere you can think of to find your favorite podcast. But if you're listening on Apple Apple Podcasts, be sure to throw us that five-star review. We certainly appreciate that from you. And um, say something nice about the show if you like it. Let others know what they can expect. Share it with somebody you think might like it. Maybe somebody doesn't get on social media very much or doesn't know about the show, maybe a grandfather, something like that. Uh, Let them know how to find the show if you think they'll enjoy it. All right. Let's start with basketball. Moses Moody named SEC Freshman of the Year. J.D. Note named Sixth Man of the Year. Now, actually Bleacher Report named Note the uh, Sixth Man of the Year for the entire country. But uh, I, I do find it's interesting, and I think a lot of you do too, that a team could finish like Arkansas has, winning so many games in a row, rank number eight in the country, and only have one player get all SEC recognition? I don't understand that. Now, I can understand Oates from Alabama getting uh, SEC Coach of the Year, and um, Eric Musselman did get a couple of votes. I can understand Oates getting that. Anytime somebody besides Kentucky wins the SEC regular season, okay, that's, that's fair. Uh, Arkansas, I do think, surprised a lot of people, but Alabama did too. I think they were picked fifth and sixth or something in the SEC. So I, I'm fine with that. But, like, to not have Justin Smith get all SEC or, you know, Jalen Tate not get all SEC or one of those guys. I mean, most teams that have a record like Arkansas does in the conference and overall, you would attribute that to more than just one player. You can't really get to that level with just one all-SEC type of player. So I do think that Arkansas got snubbed on some spots. Um, Where they aren't snubbed, I feel like, is the top ten, being in the top ten, being number eight in the country, both the AP and coaches. Um, It's the highest that they've been ranked since 1995. I mean, eighth in the country. They have the possibility of getting a two seed in the NCAA tournament if things go right with, uh, you know, with the way the SEC tournament goes. And they will be a two seed in the SEC tournament. For those wondering how to watch, first round starts tomorrow, Wednesday. There's only two games, or excuse me, only one game because Auburn is ineligible for the postseason. So you've got number 13 Texas A&M versus number 12 Vanderbilt. It's a night game, 6 p.m. Central time. Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. Curtis Wilkerson will be there, and I believe he'll do his uh, Hog Hoops live show uh, tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, uh, because I guess he's probably traveling Thursday. So probably do the show tomorrow and hopefully do some content from Nashville as well, and and hopefully we see Arkansas advance, and then he'll be headed up to uh, Indianapolis for the NCAA tournament as well. So you've got Texas A&M and Vanderbilt, and then Arkansas is game four. So it'll be the third game – excuse me, not game four. Arkansas plays the winner of game four. I've got my stuff all mixed up. So you got Mississippi State, Kentucky, the winner of A&M, Vanderbilt play in Florida, Georgia, Missouri at 6 o'clock, game four, for those who want to watch that one because the winner plays Arkansas on Friday. So And then after that, you got South Carolina and Ole Miss at the night game. So 6 o'clock, Georgia, Missouri, the winner of that plays Arkansas in game eight at 6 o'clock Central Time on SEC Network. 6 o'clock Eastern Time, Friday, March 12th. If they win that one, then they will face the winner of LSU and either South Carolina or Ole Miss. Game 11, and that should start probably around 3.30 or so on Saturday, March 13th. It's going to be 25 minutes after the other game. Uh, And then the championship game is at noon 
on Sunday. And then right after that, it's Selection Sunday. So exciting times. This is something that we all missed out on. It sucked last year. COVID-19 was, I believe, March 12th is when everything just got shut down. I remember I was coming back from Nashville and things were just – uh, we're not going to have fans, you know, at the SEC tournament, and we're not going to have an SEC tournament at all. And then the NCAA tournament is out. So it, it really sucked. And you can tell the enthusiasm. I can see, like, I don't know that I've ever – well, I know I've never seen traffic at my site in the month of March and in February the way it has been right now because people are so amped up, not just about baseball, and we'll get to a little bit of baseball, but uh, just the way the basketball team is. I mean, it's been – a quarter of a century since Arkansas has been ranked like this and doing the things that they're doing. So really exciting times. And when you consider all that, 25 years since Arkansas has done that, I mean, Arkansas has had more players make all SEC before on lesser teams. I want to flip over to recruiting real quick, and we'll probably talk some more basketball as we get to your questions and stuff. But uh, Arkansas got two big commitments, Andrew Chambly, uh, 6'6", 292-pound offensive lineman with a 6'9 wingspan. Uh, out of Maumelle, Arkansas, four-star recruit. Some say he's the top player in the state. I mean, he has a great offer list, Auburn, Florida, Louisville, Mississippi State, Missouri, Oklahoma, excuse me, Oklahoma State, Penn State, Tennessee. Nice pickup. And then also got James Joyner on Sunday. Nice-looking running back recruit out of Little Rock Parkview. Parkview's producing pretty well. Six foot, 205. He chose Arkansas over Florida State, Michigan State, Tennessee, Missouri, Utah, Virginia, Arizona State, Kansas, Colorado State, Arkansas State, Louisiana Tech, Memphis, UAP, UAB, and uh, UT San Antonio also. So Arkansas is currently ranked number 18 in the country in that recruiting class, and there's been a lot of good positive news going on. I mean, you know, I think it's interesting right now Arkansas doesn't have a quarterback in the class, and – They've coming off the board so fast, you've got six top 20 quarterbacks remaining that aren't committed somewhere right now. And probably the guy to watch for Arkansas, I guess, would be uh, M.J. Morris, number four ranked dual threat quarterback, number 106 player overall. He would probably be the guy to, I guess, keep an eye on out of the you know elite level quarterbacks. And Arkansas has done a good job recently recruiting. I mean, the last two quarterback commits they've had have been four stars, not including Felipe Franks, who was a transfer, who was a former four star. But in a recent interview with his dad, he said he's, he's talking to Arkansas a lot. Uh, Stanford, Nebraska, like Scott Frost, um, NC State, Georgia Tech, or some of the others. So he's playing baseball, but with that wrapping up, he's expected to start taking some visits. I guess that just means going, popping around to campuses because uh, you can't, like, visit with coach because they've extended the dead period further. So, But they're planning on visiting Arkansas, Stanford, Florida State, um, Miami, Nebraska, NC State. They're going to they're gonna visit a lot of schools. So interesting. Quarterback recruiting is always, always a good follow. Um, there's also, uh, Miles Rouser. This is an interesting one also because Danny has actually put in a, a crystal ball pick for Miles Rouser to Arkansas. He's from Belleville, Michigan. Now you might say, well, he's not going to Arkansas. He's from Michigan. I mean, how many players have they got from the state of Michigan? I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm sure there's somebody somewhere, but when you start looking at his four finalists, you've got Michigan state in there, but you've also got three other SEC, SEC teams. You got Kentucky, Alabama, and Arkansas. So... That's good news. <laughs> There's another guy I want to talk about, Joshua White, who uh, said he talked with his mother last night. Again, that would have been Monday night. Uh, that you know they have a decision. Basically, I think it's just a matter of time before he announces it. He's from Decatur, Georgia. Goes to Cedar Grove High School, which is the same place that Rashad DeBinion goes to. He's an Arkansas running back commitment, four-star prospect. Joshua White is six four two forty, edge guy, defensive end. Number 251 overall prospect in the country. Number 14 strong side defensive end. Number 25 player in Georgia, Arkansas, Auburn, Florida, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Several others are in the mix for him. But you like I, I think what's good right now for Arkansas is despite all the limitations they've had with recruiting with the new staff and all that stuff, despite all those limitations, you're seeing them pop up on a lot of lists for pretty highly regarded guys. And that's a good sign because you're not going to get all of them. But if you're on a lot of those lists, then – you end up getting some of them here and there. Now, looking backwards a little bit to the 2021 recruiting class, and it's significant because we are starting spring football today. I'll be out there, I think, 3.50 start time, something like that. 
Uh, but I'll be out there observing practice, what they let us observe. Hopefully they'll let us watch, uh, you know, one of the scrimmages or something, do some actual teamwork. Last fall camp, we didn't watch any team work. They were just all individual stuff. So hopefully we'll get some of that. If not today, then uh, then coming up when they strap on pads. But Raheem Sanders has moved to running back, four-star. He's listed as an athlete. Um, I think we kind of thought that he would play wide receiver, a guy that would bounce from, you know, kind of play like Traylon Burks does, except for maybe – I'd envision him maybe a little bit more running back since they do have a, a good crop of wide receivers and then playing wide receiver a little bit. But it looks like he's going to be more running back and maybe do some wide receiver stuff. But they felt a need to get a little bit more size there. He goes 6'2", 210. Nickname is Rocket. You know he's fast also. So big and fast is a good combination to have at running back. You know, Traylon Burks is a guy that I've always said, if Traylon Burks was born in 19 – well, not born then, but played football in like the, the mid-80s around when Bo Jackson and Herschel Walker and those guys played at 6'3", 233, he would have fit right in to what people were looking at, you know, as the next – you know, big time player. I mean, everybody's trying to model after those guys. They were, but they were just super unique. Charlie Burks is a unique player too at wide receiver, being six three, two thirty three. So, Raheem Sanders to running back that gives them a little bit of size. Now we don't have updated weights. We have updated roster, but like Dominic Johnson still listed at six one two forty, and we know that they wanted him to peel some weight off. Um, you know, we don't know really anybody's weight changes, but obviously these months, these weights are from August. They've gone through an entire season, an entire winter conditioning, winter training cycle. So the weights are going to be different, obviously. But uh, he did, Pittman did express uh, a desire to have more size at running back. They do have JV on Hunt, who goes about six foot 205, at least listed as a recruit. So he's bigger. You know, Dominic Johnson's obviously, no matter how much weight he lost, he's going to be well over 200. Uh, but the other backs, you know, Josh Oglesby, you know, he was in the 175 range before he got hurt in that first scrimmage in fall camp. But he's a guy with – I mean, he's an All-American track performer for Arkansas's track team. Uh, we know Traylon Smith has burners. Uh, you know, T.J. Hammonds is a guy that's really quick and elusive, shows that he can take it to the house. And they're going to leave him at running back also. But all those guys are like 190 or less, you know. But uh, just from looking at their numbers and stuff, they found that T.J. was more explosive – and more productive with the ball in his hands than he was before the ball got to him. So it made sense for them to leave him at at running back. And they've got some really talented young wide receivers. Got a lot of guys that enrolled early. So just to go over those early enrollees, Lucas Coley at quarterback. He's, I mean, KJ Jefferson is going to be the starter in the spring like he's the first snap guy all right and anything else after that will have to be determined they are going to two spot and for two spotting that means using both fields they have enough players they probably have more players than any other time in the modern era in college football I mean when you consider 10 seniors coming back that would have otherwise been out of eligibility that never happens and not not counting against the the scholarship total and you have 13 freshmen enrollees this is probably a record for Arkansas. I don't know how I would go back and check or if, even if I want to go back and do that and spend a day looking at how many players they had available for each spring. But this is uh, this has got to be a record. So it's not going to be a big deal for them to two-spot in the spring. Have this group over here and this group over here, and this should also help with contact tracing and things like that. That's something that they did all season long for those who, didn't, who don't know. So you probably have KJ working with the first group over here have Malik Hornsby working with the first, uh, excuse me, the second group over here. They've got plenty of offensive linemen to do that if they want to. There's been times where they haven't been able to put together a two deep offensive line. I think they'll have 14 available in the spring here. So Lucas Coley, he'll get some reps. He has no chance of winning the starting job if he had enrolled late. That never, I mean, it, there's a couple instances. It's it's an anomaly. But you almost have to to win the starting job as a freshman. You almost have to enroll for the spring. So Lucas Coley, JV on Hunt, who we talked about, obviously Raheem Sanders. And I think one reason you feel comfortable maybe moving Raheem is because you do have so much talent at wide receiver. And you also got guys like Keetron Jackson enrolling early, who was maybe the, the highest rated recruit in the class. Jaden Wilson enrolling early, who's a guy that I think is, is intriguing, a guy that, you know, had Missouri, Nebraska, Ole Miss, Louisville, UCLA. You know, he had a good offer list. Wasn't a four-star, but a good offer list. Uh, you also have Takias Crawford, who at 6'5", 335, probably going to challenge at that right tackle spot being a second-year player. They do feel like he has a great chance to become eligible immediately. Jalen Williams, a guy that maybe not a lot of people have – you know, talked about, but he was the number two ranked junior college defensive tackle in the country out of Jones 
County Community College in Mississippi. But he's a guy that, you know, at 6'3", 310, you'd like to think would push for some playing time. They need him to push because defensive tackle is a little thin. you got Cameron Little coming in, you know, kind of unceremoniously. Um, Reed, the kicker, starting kicker last year, just, you know, he's not on the roster. There wasn't anything like, hey, I'm going to come back for my bonus year. I'm going to, you know, try my hand somewhere else. But he's not on the roster anymore. Um, everybody else that – opted to come back for their bonus senior season, had an announcement, except for Tyson Morris. I think he just showed up like in pictures and in off-season training, so we were able to assume he's coming back, which he is. But Cameron Little, number one ranked kicker prospect in the country on the 24-7 sports composite ranking. Uh, it'll be interesting to see him come in and challenge. You know, you've also got Vito Calvaruso, I think I said that right, who started at kickoff last year. Matthew Phillips is back, who had one kick, uh, one field goal last year. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see that situation. Chris Paul Jr. at linebacker, Marco Avant at linebacker, Jermaine Hamilton Jordan kind of in that hybrid um, nickel position. And, you know, there's really behind Greg Brooks, I think we're looking at like, you know, Jaden Johnson also, who's listed as a safety. He might be a guy that kind of fits in that nickel role also. He's a bigger guy. Um, so you've got a few guys that are, you know, freshmen, redshirt freshman types that will be competing behind Greg Brooks at that nickel spot unless they move some players around. They might move Trent Gordon, who's also uh, enrolled, the transfer from Penn State. You know, he could play cornerback, maybe he plays safety or nickel, who knows. Whatever they can do to get their best number of defensive backs on the field because we're still going to see that 3-2-6 a good bit this year. Safety, probably their deepest unit. Maybe cornerback, you might say cornerback. So those are the 13 early enrollees. And then you've got, what, 10 more guys coming. Now, they're still in the market for a grad transfer or two defensive linemen. It's, it feels like they've kind of, you know, maybe backed off the idea of bringing another offensive lineman in. I think the numbers are pretty good. Even with Noah Gatlin, Noah Gatlin would have given 15 for the spring, I think. But even with Noah Gatlin not, um, you know, it retiring from football early, I believe concussions, but he's retired from football early. Um, even with him not being there, I still think, you just got to focus on defensive line. They want to bring in a run stopper. They want to bring in an edge rusher. But all that's going to happen probably after the spring because there just hasn't been a lot happening so far. So what are the key storylines? Obviously the position moves, you know, and it's not just Raheem Sanders, Zach Zymus, I think moving outside the box a little bit, maybe to uh, the nickel, you know, an outside linebacker, maybe even safety. You know, he's 6'4", 225, which sounds fine, but he is rangy. You know, he's not like compact, you know, build, but he is athletic. So maybe this is a good positive move for him. Any other stuff I think is probably you would consider more of a shift like Shane Clinton. They're going to try to work him exclusively at center. Instead of taking Ty Clary, working him at guard, working him at center, they're going to – they want to have like a dedicated number two center and also allow Ty Clary to just develop more at guard. You know, I think it's interesting when you consider Ty Clary because he started, what, seven games, something like that last year. They have 20 players back who started the last game of the season. But that doesn't include a ton of guys like Jalen Catalan and Grant Morgan. You know, those didn't, guys didn't start the last game of the season due to, you know, injuries or having to sit out a half, you know, things like that. So, they're like – there's a ton of guys like that who – it's just it's, – I've never seen so many – returning players with with experience like they have right now you know Hudson Clark is another one I think maybe Kari no Ladarius Bishop started the last game at cornerback and you know Hudson Clark started I think seven games but you know he wouldn't count on that group of 20 guys you know obviously Felipe Franks would pretty much be the only one but um you know I, I think it's you know you got Bo Limmer also with starting experience you just got a lot of returning players from last year and I've always thought that you know going back to when we first found out that that year was going to be forgiven that that was a way that Arkansas could close the gap on some teams that might have guys go ahead and go pro you know guys that are juniors guys that are I don't think Arkansas didn't have any juniors go pro they had some players transfer out here and there but they didn't have any juniors go pro they didn't have any um, just a handful of the seniors who had the opportunity to come back. You know, it was some good seniors, Xavier Kelly, Jonathan Marshall, Felipe Franks. Uh, Rakeem Boyd opted out early and opted out of the season early. But, um, I mean, got a lot coming back next year. It's a good sign for Arkansas. Maturity. Spring practice schedule, Tuesday, March 9th, Thursday the 11th, Saturday the 13th. Then the 16th, the 18th, the 20th, also Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then the 23rd, and then they're going to go on an imaginary spring break <laughs> because spring break was actually 
actually change. They have student holidays. So basically they have three long weekends. They have two left. And one of them's right around here. Maybe the 25th, 26th is a, is a student holiday, which is a Thursday, Friday. So they'll take off the 24th through the 31st and come back April 1st, which is a Thursday. So they'll pick right up and then they go the 3rd, the 6th, the 8th, the 10th, following again, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday schedule, the 13th, the 15th, Tuesday, Thursday, and then the red-white game on the 17th. And we'll see what kind of availability we get for that red-white game in terms of fans in attendance. I would assume it would probably be the same kind of limitations you'd have for a regular game, but it will be televised, so that'll be good. The quarterback battle, obviously intriguing. We talked about that a little bit. The early enrollees, that's a great storyline. All the position battles, it's not just, you know, the offensive line and quarterback. There's, you know, there's some battles to be had at, at wide receiver with some new guys. I think the secondary, you know, the defensive backs, there are a lot of opportunities, um, you know, for guys to, you know, who are younger to push, but also guys who are older, guys who started last year. You know, there are more guys with pretty good bit of starting experience due to all the COVID stuff and some injuries and stuff, um, you know, that, that – may like you know feel like it's their job you know so i think that's super intriguing uh the secondary you do have some guys that are going to be out for the spring also you know levi draper's not going to be back out there devion warren's not going to be back out there uh Quillen jackson is another player that's moved he's moved to tight end but he's not um you know he's not going to be 100 percent either he's going to have to pack on some weight i didn't think I didn't think it made a lot of sense to move him to tight end based on what we saw with players moving last year. You had, you know, offensive linemen and defensive ends moving to tight end last year, big body guys. Uh, and Corlin's a big kid. I mean, 6'2", 223, and probably is more now with, you know, trying to add more weight, but just didn't really fit the mold of what they were looking for at tight end. And, of course, the new assistant coaches. Derek LeBlanc being replaced. By Jermile Ashley, Justin Stepp replaced by Kenny Guyton. Justin Stepp is the only one who left on his own. Michael Scher replacing Ryan Rhodes. Cody Kennedy uh, replacing Ron Coop, or, uh, John Cooper. And Pittman seems to like the additions. He seems to like his new assistant coaches, the way they interact with people. And we'll see on recruiting. I think a lot of that was made just based on recruiting. So, just to kind of go over things, refresh a little bit. K.J. Jefferson, Malik Hornsby, likely challengers at quarterback. Running back, Traylon Smith, T.J. Hammonds, Josh Oglesby, Dominic Johnson, J.B. on Hunt, Raheem Sanders. And it'll be interesting to add to that group. You got A.J. Green coming in as a four-star freshman. So many names at wide receiver. I mean, I think a, an intriguing guy is going to be Jaqueline Crawford. We kind of got excited because we were going to get to see him play TCU in the bowl game, and then that got canceled. But Jaqueline Crawford, where does he fit in? You know, they have talked about playing Mike Woods more in the slot. Well, that's kind of where I would envision Jaqueline Crawford. It's 5'10", 172, an electric player. And what does that mean for Traylon Burks? Because he played slot. And slot, you know, playing that position, he, you know, went in and out of the backfield a lot, sometimes lined up at running back. So what does that mean for him? Are we going to see the resurgence of Trey Knox? Is Darren Turner going to say hello? Is he going to introduce himself? He was a four-star prospect in the class of uh, 2020. And then you got, you know, Keetron Jackson, Bryce Stevens, another early enrollee. Did Stevens enroll early? No, Stevens didn't enroll early. Never mind. Jaden Wilson did. But Jaden Wilson, you know, a long, lanky 6'3", 175-pounder. And then, you know, you got stuff with tight end. Hudson Henry, who was injured a good bit last year. You know, Blake Kern coming back. Colin Sutherland may be limited also at tight end, who I don't believe he played at all last year. And then the offensive line, you know, they got so many scholarship players returning. And you know the regular names, you know, with Ricky Stromberg and Myron Cunningham and Ty Clary. We talked about Shane Clennon a little bit. Bo Lemmer, you know, he was injured a good bit last year. Is he going to reclaim his spot? There's a battle to be had there at guard. Brady Latham, who started last year. You know, what about Jalen St. John? What about Ray Curry, Marcus Henderson? From Sam Pittman, from what he said, all the players, all the offensive linemen are over 300 pounds. They were on scholarship except for one. I don't know if that means – Marcus Henderson was 6'5", 285 last year. He played some tight end for him, obviously. But I think they kind of view him as a left tackle of the future type of possibility. So, 
A lot of good battles at offensive line. You like to see that. Arkansas has not had enough offensive linemen since like 2014 or something. And now I think they'll have 17 on scholarship. So that's good. Dorian Gerald's back. Mateo Soley, what's his weight now? 6'4", 235 in August. I know they wanted him to add weight. Has he added weight? Zach Williams, Eric Gregory, Jashad Stewart could be an interesting guy to watch. They need some explosion off, uh, you know, at defensive end. Eric Thomas, we've heard some good things about him too, the freshman. A guy who moved to middle linebacker who played some tight end last year for a couple of practices. But we've heard some good things about him. He saw a little bit of action last year. And then defensive tackle, is Jalen Williams going to be the guy that steps up? What about, you know, if you're talking about, like, who's the best-looking guys on this team on a defensive tackle, you're probably talking Marcus Miller, 6'5", 307, again, August weight, and probably talking about Andy Boykin. Miller being a redshirt freshman last year, so he'd be a sophomore technically, a redshirt freshman if he wants another year of eligibility. And Andy Boykin, 6'4", 314. Enoch Jackson, Torian Carter. Nick Fullwater hasn't done a whole lot in a short time here. Isaiah Nichols leads that group. I think he's a – you know, you'd probably say he's a strong, strong bet to, to start. Maybe one of the surprise players from last year out of Springdale, Arkansas. And then linebacker, you know, you've got Grant Morgan, Bumper Pool. Those are your two starters. Levi Draper is going to be uh, limited in the spring. But Hayden Henry's back. Andrew Parker saw a little bit of action. You know, what about Kellen Burl? JT Towers. What about Marco Avant and Chris Paul? You know, some of those freshman guys. Deion Edwards is another senior who opted to come back. So, good number of players at linebacker and an All-American returning. I think if you'd asked some people last year before the start of the 2020 season, you're going to have an All-American linebacker, who's it going to be? They would have said bumper pool. Safety, nickel types. You know, Joe Fouché had a couple of starts last year. But played a great – I mean, there with six defensive backs on the field, there's an opportunity for a lot of these guys. Obviously, Jalen Catalan is an animal. He's the first freshman in the SEC in like six years or something like that, maybe longer than that, to have at least 70 tackles and three interceptions. He had 99 tackles. He would have gone over 100 if they'd played the bowl game. But Jalen Catalan is a stud. He's the best player, best safety they've had since 2003, since Ken Hamlin. But you got Joe Fouché, Jalen Catalan – um, Simeon Blair is another guy who was put on scholarship last year who is apparently standing out in the spring – or, excuse me, standing out in winter workouts. Nick Turner started the last game last year. He was one of those 20 I was counting. You also got Greg Brooks returning, who Greg Brooks made – you know, talk about surprise players. I did not think he played very well as a freshman. I thought he was too light. He was picked on a lot. And I felt like he was more of a weapon for him last year, 5'11", 185. Continue to build on that. He's got a future. Uh, Ja'Cory Turner is a guy that we heard a lot of good things about, probably in that nickel type of role also, Poss- probably backing up Greg Brooks Jr. to start things out. Miles Slusher, four-star, who played a lot as a freshman. I don't think anybody felt like he was a freshman. He was just a good player. Usually there's a, a moment where like a freshman will make just a colossal error if they're a, sec- if they're a safety and somebody just houses it on you. But we, I, don't, I don't remember ever seeing that from Miles Slusher. So, good-looking group there. And then cornerback, Monteric Brown. I think Monteric Brown has next-level ability. Ladarius Bishop started that last game, but we saw Hudson Clark a lot. And Hudson Clark, some people talk, does he, would he be a better fit at safety? You know, Arkansas doesn't win that Ole Miss game last year without Hudson Clark making three interceptions. Trent Gordon, where does he fit in? Former four-star prospect. Malik Chavis, good-looking kid, 6'2", 194. The biggest cornerback on the team. Does he stay at cornerback? Is he a nickel? Is he a safety? I mean, he's a guy that I think, you know, both staffs since he's been at Arkansas have liked him. Devin Bush only played two games last year, had that shoulder injury. Is he going to make himself known? He's a former four-star. He's a big-time get. Nick Turner. Nick Turner is actually a safety. Excuse me. Nick Turner, I meant to mention him at safety, but he started the last game too. He started the last game at safety. So, interesting stuff. Interesting battles. Should be a fun spring. I just hope that we're allowed a good amount of access. What else we got? I think we pretty much covered every position group. Stinks about Noah Gatlin. This guy with a lot of talent. Just couldn't stop with the injuries. Uh, 
All right. Baseball. Arkansas had a three-game sweep of Murray State, as expected. Arkansas is undefeated in baseball, a consensus number one. 7-6 7-6 on Friday over Murray State, 11-6 on Saturday, and 6-0 on Sunday for the sweep. Their next game is at Louisiana Tech on Friday, March 12th. That is at 6 p.m. That's not a good time to be playing baseball. SEC tournament game. I know which one I'll be watching. <laughs> and then they play Saturday at 2. Let's see how that jives up with baseball – or excuse me, with basketball. So – it's the same the the Friday game is the same time as Arkansas playing either Georgia or Missouri. And if Arkansas wins that one, then they play probably around 3:30 and Saturday game is at 2 in baseball. So they'll be starting in the middle of the baseball game. And then Sunday's game is at 1, Sunday's baseball game. So if Arkansas advances, then they'll be playing at noon in basketball. So all these games overlap, the Louisiana Tech stuff. We are going to focus – I'm just going to go ahead and warn you, we're going to focus on basketball coverage. Curtis is going to be at the SEC tournament. So if Arkansas is still playing when the baseball games are, are going on, you know, we'll, we'll have some stuff on that, but we're going to put our attention on basketball. I'm not going to tell Danny West. I mean, I don't do a great job covering baseball myself. That's, that's Curtis and, and Danny. But I'm not going to tell Danny that he can't watch the basketball game. Because I know all you guys are going to be watching the basketball game, too. And then right after that, you know, OU, a midweek game on Tuesday. And then you jump in Friday against Alabama, March 19th, 20th, and 21st. What else we got? We got questions from you guys. I just went 33 minutes nonstop talking. Josh Gar says he can't ha- help but have a biased opinion and will say Arkansas was snubbed on the all-SEC teams. By the way, before I get into these questions, I do want to say thank you to everybody for signing up for our huge promotion. Um, Paramount Plus came out uh, on March 4th, March 4th, and we ran a big promotion, 50% off Hog Sports. It ended up being like less than $54 in free Paramount Plus, commercial free version, the upper end version, which is $100 value. So it's like $240 value, and you get one fifty percent off, you get the other for free. I, I did not feel like – I put that out everywhere, and people were like, gosh, Trey, you kept promoting and promoting it. I did not feel like – we have ever offered anything better than that in terms of a promotion. And I'm glad that you saw that with me also because we sold more of those packages than any other site in the entire country at Arkansas. Any other site. And not just like by a little bit, but like hundreds more than the next closest site. So I'm glad Arkansas fans saw what I saw in that. I just felt like that was just too good a deal, and I wanted to make sure that everybody saw it and. Uh, glad to say that a ton of people took advantage of that. Again, more than anybody else in the country. You, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a heck of a deal. Paramount Plus, and here's the deal too. Like, if you're subscribed to Hog Sports right now, so you can sign up for Hog Sports for a dollar, but for your first month. But once that month trial is over and you decide you want to go, you know, start paying regular price, then you still get Paramount Plus. You can still sign up for Paramount Plus for free, which again is a hundred dollar value. So. It's a heck of a deal still, even without the 50% off deal. And the great thing about it, too, is you get Paramount Plus for as long as you're subscribed to Hog Sports. So if you're subscribed for five years, you get five years of Paramount Plus. Great package. Great deal. Glad everybody signed up for that. I just think it was it's too good of a deal to pass up. I mean, not only do I pride ourselves on our coverage at Hog Sports, consider us the number one insider source on the Razorbacks, the number one team site for Arkansas out there, period. Number one subscriber site. I don't know what everybody's traffic numbers are, but I'd be surprised. I would be surprised if they match ours. So, appreciate everybody signing up for that. Let's get to your questions now. Josh Carr says, I can't help but have a biased opinion of Arkansas was snubbed on the All-SEC teams. I mean, they were. They obviously were. You cannot have a team as good as Arkansas has without more than just one All-SEC type of player. I just – I can't – I don't agree with that. 
Austin Malaysa Nichols says, do the Hogs have an honest chance of signing the safety out of Michigan that just got a crystal ball? I mean, Danny West crystal balled him. And, I mean, I don't know that he was at a super high confidence level, but I would say you've got a one in four chance, a 25% chance if he's in your top four. And Arkansas seems to be the team that's trending. Butler Benton, the new director of uh, player personnel at Arkansas, is from Detroit, and I think there's a little bit of a connection there. So that helps. Keegan, Kagan Ryan Gomer says, what's up, Trey, KJ, or Malik? I got KJ. I think KJ, I think if Malik Hornsby is going to win the starting job at quarterback, it's going to be something that happens during the season, either, you know, from an injury or KJ, they need to replace KJ for something, something like that. John Oliver says, any chance we get Jalen Williams back for the SEC tournament? What I'm hearing is no. I'm hearing that's not going to happen, which I like Arkansas's chances way more against Georgia. Like, I like Arkansas to stomp Georgia, even without Jalen Williams. But I'm not sure they beat Missouri without him, just the way Missouri plays. That's a scary game, I think. So, hopefully those rumors are wrong and he's able to play. But COVID's a tricky deal. If, again, that's what it is. Nobody ever said it was COVID, but I think we assume, right? Adrian Jones says Jalen Tate and Justin Smith should have at least made second team for their defense and offense. I agree. Joyce Linton McCone says, hey, Miss McCone, is Tyler Kakatori being mentioned in baseball? I, I'm you're probably somebody else to ask for that. Maybe, maybe ask Curtis on uh, Hog Hoops Live tomorrow. He'll talk baseball too. Love this commentary. Thank you, Miss McCone. Jason Carly sa- Cartonley says, Smith, Tate, and Devo going to play with a chip on their shoulder from here on out. I'd hate to go against them. I mean, that's maybe the silver lining of getting snubbed. Lance Taylor says, yes, they finally got in the top ten. John Oliver says, see what ha- we see what happens when Smith was out. He should have been on one of all, all those teams. I agree. Adrian Jones says Devo should have been on the all-freshman team too. Yeah, I mean – all fresh, Jalen Williams and Devo. Devo definitely should have. I mean, he Devo Davis is starting for the number eight ranked team in the country, and he's not on the all freshman team. Get out of here. It's weak, 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 weak. Anthony Smith says, "What's up with Jay Williams' status heading to the SEC tournament?" We talked about that. John Oliver says, "April seventeenth for." Red white game. Maybe somebody asked what the red white game was. Colton Smith says, "Go Hogs from Whiteman Air Force Base." Trey, when is the red white game? Appreciate you, Colton. Red white game is seventeenth. Okay, I see. For some reason, those got mixed up on here backwards. Josh Carr says, "How many times did Jalen score more than twenty points? He definitely deserves a spot with Justin Smith. Hell, even an argument can be thrown with Devo Davis and some and some more. I mean, one of those guys, but both of them getting snubbed. I just I can't believe that." For a team to do what Arkansas did in the SEC, where they go thirteen and four, the best SEC record they've had since winning the national championship, and there's one All SEC performer. Get out of here! I just, when you say it out loud like that, I mean, how stupid does it sound? All the baseball and basketball games have the same start times, but risk severe weather this weekend may affect baseball. That's right. I did see the weather yesterday. It could affect baseball. Good point. Matthew Lowe says, really hope we get Marjan Bochamp. Lance Taylor says, the Hogs hit all cylinders at the right time. Wins the red-white scrimmage, says Marcus Brown. John Oliver answering everybody April 17th. Marcus Brown says, thanks, bud. John Dexter says, any basketball recruiting news? I am wondering – so, John, I would probably advise go ahead and turn tune in on Wednesday to Hog Hoops Live. It'll be on this same Facebook page, and Curtis will answer all your basketball stuff. He's he's our primary basketball recruiting guy, so he can give you any updates you need there. Josh Collins says, Woo Pig Suey Hog Basketball is back where it belongs. Finally. Kate Alexander says, Did Ty Clary retire? No, he did not. Ty Clary's competing at right guard. Neil Heather Du DeClose Pierce says, what happened to the DE coach number 13? You know, coach was in this thread one time, in this discussion thread. And that's where we first indicated that he's coming back. And then he indicated on Twitter that he's coming back. And next thing you know, he's in the transfer portal. So it's kind of a weird deal. He was he was not with the team at the end of the year. It looked like he was coming back. Then he's not coming back. Best of luck. The guy's got a lot of talent. Probably – Probably Arkansas's most talented defensive lineman, and, and so 
it stinks that it's not going to work out. What are the odds we get Quincy McAdoo to flip us? Hunter, Hunter Brumley says. Brumley says. So there has been some indications on Twitter from you know James Joyner, even McAdoo himself, that a flip could possibly be in the works. And I would think Kenny Guyton would deserve some credit for that. McAdoo is a four-star talent. The thing with McAdoo is you know there's no track season. No, you know, camps are limited. So it's really difficult on our evaluators because at 24-7 sports, something I've really noticed is we like verified times. They want to see a verified camp run 40 time or a 100-meter dash time at a track meet. They want to know is, is the speed for real. If McAdoo, in my opinion, can show he can run in a 4-5 range, he'll get a four-star. Steve Miller says, what happened with Blaine Toll? According to his mom, it wasn't like playing time or anything, although I do think he stood a lot better chance at playing at defensive end than tight end. I was not a big fan of him at tight end, but it felt like he could have he could have been a, a good player at, at defensive end. But from what she said, he just wasn't happy there. Now, I don't know what the circumstance was. Something happened. You know, something on a personal level happened. You know, there's there's all kinds of relationships that could have affected that, you know. Um, he, I know he's from a small town. What is – Hayes and less than 1,400 people, I think. I'm from a small town. Sheridan was 3,800 people when I left there. Uh, I'd also lived in North Little Rock for five years prior, but I went to Fayetteville and thought I was in heaven. I couldn't – I mean, <laughs> I never wanted to leave. I'm still here. So uh, it's hard for me to imagine 18 years old and being in Fayetteville and not being happy there, but I don't know. I mean, different strokes for different folks. So wish him luck. I'm sure he'll hopefully find what he's looking for. Greg Marler says, with Davis and Pittman being so good at OL recruiting and the Hogs being finals for so many good OL, what do you foresee, you foresee a scenario where they would take some of the out-of-staters and not save a spot for E. Harris if he continues to wait? I don't know that they would turn down a, a Marion Harris. That's a good question. I think that they'll try to sign four, so there's still plenty of room in this class for them to uh, – you know, wait on a Marion Harris. But uh, maybe we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I mean, it's possible they could say, hey, you know, we're ready for you. Come on. We don't have much spots left. We want you. But we got to do what we got to do. And, that you know, that happens all the time. I'm not saying that's going to happen with a Marion Harris. I think he's a really good talent and not a guy that you would want to push through a door. You want to open the door. So I always say, open the door and let him walk through. Don't push him through. But – um I would like to see them get a Marion Harris. He's a guy that – you know, the thing I like about Harris is he has been like 6'5", 300-something pounds forever. You know, it's not like a guy that's like suddenly shoots up and it's got to grow into his body. Steve Miller says, girlfriend at A-State. Yeah, I've heard some talk about girlfriend for uh, Blaine Tull. John Sullivan says, heard anything on Chandler or McIntosh lately? Not me. Steve Fugerhaus, that's a tough one. Fogarosa. Maybe you might have to like put a pronunciation guide on that one, Steve. I don't think I've seen that one before. Didn't hear you comment on Zach Zymus. Could be a star at safety. Yeah, we talked about Zach a little bit uh, early on. But, yeah, he's, he's moving outside either safety, nickel, something like that. Satania just committed to Texas A&M. There was crystal balls in for Isaiah Satania to Texas A&M. I didn't see that. I, maybe it did happen before the show started. Musk got snubbed for coach of the year. I don't know if it's fair to say he got snubbed. You know, he got a couple of votes. I could have seen him get more votes. But Nate Oates, what they did at Alabama was very impressive. Uh, they had a heck of a run. Arkansas came on with their big run later. Uh, but they had a heck of a run. I can't I can't say that Nate Oates didn't deserve to get coach of the year also. I think Musselman did deserve it, but I also think Oates did too. So it's hard for me to say snubbed. Um, you know, mainly because, I mean, when's Alabama win the SEC? You know, Ingrid Fort says, thanks for keeping us up to date. Appreciate you, Ingrid. Kevin Corbin says, do you figure a contract extension is the work for must? Yes. I mean, anytime, first of all, whenever you have a coach on campus for two years, entering the third year, they get a contract extension. It's almost just policy. It happens with football. It happens with basketball. And a lot of that's done for recruiting, just to make sure you keep four years on that contract. That's kind of what schools like to do. So, uh, absolutely. Even if he wasn't having the year that he's having, Musk would have been, uh, you know, a contract would have been in the works for him. William Knox says, why did Trey Knox fall out of favor last year? He just had a slump. I don't know if there was maybe an injury they didn't talk about. 
Um, but he just did not – he just didn't play that well. I mean, he there were opportunities there. So, hopefully he picks it up. He's got a lot of talent. So, hopefully he picks it back up. I think maybe he will. Dylan Beaver says, what's the recruiting class ranked so far? It's 18th in the class of 2022 in football. Tim Hudson says, Alabama returned four starters. We had zero, though. Am I wrong thinking – he should have have one. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being salty. I mean, I, I get it. Yeah, Arkansas. Well, D, uh, Desi Sills returned, but I mean, whoops. Sorry about that. But um, I mean, I, I just think you can make a case for either one of them, and I don't think you know it'd been nice for Musselman to get the recognition, but I, I just can't say that Nate Oates didn't deserve it either. All right, everybody. Where are we at? I think we pretty well did it. I want to remind everybody before we head out of here, again, you're going to want to stay tuned to Hog Sports because we're going to have a ton of spring football coverage, NCAA tournament coverage, of course. It might slip a little bit on baseball just beginning on, on how things go. But be sure, if you haven't thrown us a thumbs up on Facebook Live or on YouTube, like, thumbs up, whatever you want to call it. Go ahead and do that. Interact with the video. We certainly appreciate that. It helps boost the show for others. Also available on Apple Podcasts. If you haven't thrown us a five-star, if you've never thrown us a five-star review on there, please help us out and do that. It really boosts the show. Leave a leave a uh, five-star rating. Leave a review. Um, again, really helps us out. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. All right. My voice is starting to crackle just a little bit, so we're going to wrap it up. I want to thank all of you for your questions and hope you enjoyed today's show. We'll be back with you guys soon. I don't know if we do something in correlation with spring football, but uh, I'm planning on, again, Curtis is going to be with you guys on Wednesday, but planning on maybe him doing something from Nashville also. Maybe walk and talk S, maybe just hold the camera in front of him, whatever. We'll see how it goes. All right, everybody, appreciate you for joining us. For joining us, this has been Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.